Good day grade 10s. Welcome to our last lesson in algebraic expressions. Today we're going to be looking at the simplification of fractions and what we're going to be doing is using every skill that we've learned within the factorization to simplify some fractions. So the first thing that you need to do when you're looking at your fractions is look at your denominator. We're going to look at our denominator. So the reason we want to look at our denominator is in order to make these easy to do, we need for these denominators to have what is called the LCD, the lowest common denominator. In other words, we want the smallest number that both 5 and 10 can go into. So in this case it is pretty easy because we can see that the smallest number that both 5 and 10 can go into is obviously 10. So we're going to put a lowest common denominator of 10. Now just as much as you would normal with normal fractions when you're adding them, we're going to do the same thing we would normally do. We divide the denominator of this into that 10 and then multiply whatever's left with the numerator. So let's go through it. So we've got 5 divided into 10 goes twice. So it's going to be 2 times whatever this numerator is over here. So it's going to be 2 times a minus b plus, you always carry over whatever the sign is in the middle, 10 into 10 is once, and then what are we left with? We're left with b minus a. Now obviously, you do not need to write this 1 times b minus a. I'm just doing it so you can see the pattern. We can see what exactly we're doing. So now, what we need to do now is multiply these out and make it nice and neat. So 2 times a is 2a minus 2b plus b minus a all over 10. Now we look for like terms. So we go 2a minus a is a and minus 2b plus b is minus b all over 10. And that's it. That's how nice and easy this is. Now we are going to do versions which are slightly more complicated than this but the whole basis of this is finding a lowest common denominator that all the fractions can go into and then just multiplying whatever the leftover is when we divide and then simplify. So let's do a couple of examples. Right, so if we look at this we can see that now it's getting a little bit more tricky because we've got some letters at the denominator but it's still not that bad. So if we look at this we can see if we look at the first two we can see the lowest common denominator for this 3 and 6 is obviously going to be 6 because both 3 and 6 go into that but unfortunately 4 does not go into 6. So then if we look at 3 and 4 we see the lowest common denominator for 3 and 4 is 12 because 3 times 4 is 12 and 6 goes into 12 as well. So awesome. So now we know that the lowest common denominator is 12. And now we have to look at our letters. We need the lowest common denominator with our letters. In other words, we want to include all the letters that need to be included. So do you see that here we've got an A and here we've got an A so we need to include an A to the 1 which we're not going to write and here we've got B and B so we're going to write B over here. Right, now we do exactly the same as we would have done in the, or as we did in the previous example. So we go 3b divides into 12ab. So 3 into 12 gives you 4, okay. The b's cancel and you're left with a times by 2a. Always carry over whatever sign there is there, minus, put a bracket in. 6ab into 12ab. Well, 6 goes into 12 twice, okay, and the ab's cancel, and then what are we left with? Whatever's above the 6ab, which is 2a squared minus 3b squared, bracket, and I need to extend this line a little bit. There we go. And then again, we carry over the sign between them, which is a plus. And then 4 goes into 12 how many times? 3. And this time the A's cancel and you're left with a B. And then we've got a bracket times by 3B. Now you'll notice that I put a bracket here even though it was just one number. And the reason I do that is because I worry that people always forget about multiplying through with that minus. So you can either always put brackets around everything or as soon as you see that there's a minus between the terms, just put your brackets in to make sure you don't mess it up. Right, now let's multiply it out. So 4 times 2 is 8 
and a times a is a squared minus minus 2 times 2a squared is minus 4a squared and then minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6b squared and then plus times a plus is a plus and 3 times 3 is 9b squared all over 12ab right now we carry on now we look at like terms so we've got 8 minus 4 a squared so those are a squared 8 minus 4 is going to be 4 so we've got 4 a squared and then we've got plus 6 plus 9 is plus 15 b squared all over 12 a b and if we look carefully we can see there's no like terms there's no difference to two squares nothing else so we are done <coughs> Right, let's look at this one. Now, this starting to look a little bit more complicated, and yeah, we're going to start having to use what we've learned with the factorization first. So before we actually even look for a common, lowest common denominator, we're going to factorize this. So, first of all, x minus 1 stays as x minus 1. There's nothing we can do with that, x minus 1. But with this denominator, do you agree that we actually can take out a common factor of x? And we're left with x plus 1 plus, and then 3, there's nothing we can do with that. But what you need to realize is if you look at this, remember that we did dots, difference of two squares. Well, obviously, this is x squared minus 1, so it's x squared, so it becomes x plus 1, x minus 1. Now, we want the lowest common denominator, so we want the lowest number that all three of these can go into, and that would therefore be x, x plus 1, and then x minus 1. Guys, this is exactly the same as if I was looking for the lowest common denominator of 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 5. If I had to look at this, I'd go 2 times 3 is 6, and 3 times 5 is 15. I mean, 3 times 5 is 15 times by 2 is um, 30. So the, my lowest common denominator that all three of these numbers would go into is 30. If I had another number here, which was, I don't know, another 1 over 5, and you multiplied it, which is what you were doing here, you'd end up with a much bigger number, but it wouldn't make a difference. You'd end up just having to simplify it out again. So if you included this other, the second x plus 1, it doesn't matter. It's not going to make a difference. It's going to simplify it eventually. But you're really looking for the smallest number that all three can go into. So basically, you're including all the different brackets or factors that are in the lowest in, in the denominator. So it's x, x plus one, and x minus one. Right now, we do exactly the same as we've done before. We divide this into that and see what we've got left. So x and x plus, x plus 1 cancels out this x and x plus 1 and you're left with x minus 1. So it becomes x minus 1 times by the numerator of x minus 1 plus we carry that 3 over and x plus 1 and x minus 1 cancel with these two and you're left with just x. Right, <clears throat> now we need to multiply this out and make it look neat. So we're going to go x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x and a minus times a minus is a plus 1 plus 3x all over x, x plus 1, x minus 1, which then becomes x squared plus x plus 1 all over x x plus 1, x minus 1. And you can look at this and see if you can factorize it into a trinomial, but it actually doesn't factorize, so you are now officially done. Right, let's look at the next example. Okay, I do not want you to freak out at all, okay? It looks scary, but if we take it baby steps, you'll see that it's actually quite easy. So the first thing I'm going to see is, oh, look, this is a trinomial. So what I'm going to do before I even see if these brackets are my only, <coughs> excuse me, my only um, factors, I'm going to factorize this. So I'm going to go x, 
and x, two brackets. The plus here tells me that both the signs are the same and the minus tells me they both are minus. And my factors of 2 are just 2 and 1. And if we think about that, that becomes minus 2x minus x, which becomes minus 3x. So you can see now that we've got the x minus 1 over here, and we've got something that looks very similar. It is 2 minus x instead of x minus 2. Now, what we can do is a little technique which is called a switch round. A switch round. Because we want this to look like this dude over here. So in order for that to happen, we can say that 2 minus x is the same as minus x minus 2. All that we do is take out a minus and swap the sides. That's why we call it a switch round. And now you can see that we've got x minus 1, we have effectively a minus x minus 2, and we've got this. So if we had to rewrite this, rewrite this, we're going to have x minus 2 over x minus 1 plus x minus 1 over minus x minus 2 plus 3x minus 5 all over x squared minus, oops, I actually wanted to, let's immediately write it into its brackets. Okay, and then go back to the ink color. Right, so now it becomes x minus 2 and x minus 1. Much better. So now, in order for this to be look like that, what we're going to do is multiply that minus in there. So then it becomes x minus 2, x minus 1, minus x minus 1, x minus 2, plus 3x minus 5, over x minus 2, x minus 1. Now, you can see now that our lowest common denominator is x minus 2, x minus 1, so life gets a little bit easier. So, common denominator of x minus 2, x minus 1. Right, x minus 1 goes into the x minus 1, x minus 2, and leaves you just with the x minus 2. So, we end up with x minus 2, from there, times by that x minus 2, we bring down the sign, minus, and what are we left with? In this case, this x minus 2 cancels with that x minus 2, and we're left with x minus 1. So it becomes x minus 1, x minus 1, and then obviously these two cancel with these two, and you're just left with 3x minus 5. Right, and now because it's getting a bit long, I'm going to start writing over here. So, now we need to multiply these out. So, x times x is x squared minus 2x minus 2x is minus 4x. And then that becomes plus 4 minus, let's leave the minus outside. So, it becomes x times x is x squared minus x minus x is minus 2x. And a minus times a minus is a? plus 1, plus 3x, minus 5, all over the denominator still, which is x minus 2, x minus 1, right. So then, we have to now just get rid of these brackets. So we've got x squared, minus 4x, plus 4, minus x squared, minus times a minus gives you a plus 2x, minus times a plus is a minus 1. Do you see why I left the brackets out there? Because it's very easy to make that mistake with that minus and you end up just with x squared plus, minus 2x plus 1 and you mess up the whole sum, which is very frustrating. So we want to make sure you don't do that. All over x minus 2, x minus 1. Now we add our like terms. So x squared cancels with minus x squared. Life is good. We've got minus 4x plus 2x is minus 2x plus 3x is just x. And then we've got plus 4 minus 1 is going to be 3. Minus 5 is minus 2. So it's x minus 2 all over x minus 2, 
x minus 1. And what you need to realize is as soon as there's a dividing line between the numerator and denominator, everything here is effectively one whole number, which means that we can cancel this with this, the whole of that with all of that, and we're just left with 1 over x minus 1. Sure. Okay, now that seems like a really long sum, and it is a little bit, but I also could have skipped steps, which I didn't do. I could have maybe not put that and that as two separate lines, but done it all in one, and we could have maybe just gone straight to this. But it's sometimes better, personally, to take it baby steps and make sure you get it right because it is very frustrating to do this whole long sum and then end up with something really weird because you've made a silly mistake with leaving the minuses out or something silly. So rather take it slowly and make sure you get everything right. Let's do another example. Okay, now before we have a freak out about this, let's have a look at this. Do you agree, before we do anything else, that this here is a difference of two cubes? Okay, the difference of two cubes. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to factorize that first and then see what happens, okay? So if I factorize this, I have 8 minus a cubed. Okay, now if you remember from our video factorizing two cubes, we use the cube root of 8, which is 2, minus the cube root of a cubed, which is a. Then we square the first term, so it becomes 4. Whatever the sign is, we do the opposite, so it's times by. We multiply the two of these, so it becomes 2a. And then we go plus the square of this, which is a squared. And oh my hat, if you look at that, do you agree that that there is exactly the same as that there? And a minus 2 is actually exactly the same as 2 minus a, except that it's a switch round. Right, so now let's see if we can write that in. So we've got 3 plus a over 4 plus 2a plus a squared minus a cubed over, I'm going to write this out here, 2 minus a, 4 plus 2a plus a squared minus, and now we want to do this into a switch round because we want it to look like that. So it becomes minus a over minus 2 minus a. Okay, so now I'm going to write this. I'm sorry that it looks like this, but I'm actually going to write it here because this looks really long. So do you agree our common denominator, therefore, is this dude here? It is going to be 2 minus a times by 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Why? Because there's the 4 plus 2a plus a squared and there's the 2 minus a. So our common denominator is going to be 2 minus a and then it's 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Right, and now all we do is what we would have done before. So we divide this into our common denominator and we're left with 2 minus a. So we go 2 minus a times by 3 plus a minus, in this case, it's just a cubed. And then we've got to get rid of this minus. So minus times minus is a plus, or minus divided by minus is plus. And then if you look here, the 2 minus a goes into this, leaves you with this horrible 4 plus 2a plus a squared. So we've got a times 4 plus 2a plus a squared. Right, now what do we need to do? Obviously we need to multiply the brackets on the numerator. So 2 times 3 is 6. Then we've got plus 2a minus 3a minus a squared, minus a cubed stays the same, and then we multiply this out. So it becomes plus 4a plus 2a squared, and then becomes plus a cubed all over this 2 minus a, 4 plus 2a plus a squared, 
and now we just need to add like terms. So let's have a look. Luckily for us, the minus a cubed cancels with the a cubed. Life is good. Then we've got minus two a squared plus two a squared. So it just becomes a squared. Um, then it becomes two a plus four a, which is plus six a. And then the only number left. Oopsie, yeah, I left out this minus 3a. So it becomes 4a plus 2a minus 3a. And then plus 6 all over the denominator, which is 2 minus a. And then 4 plus 2a plus a squared. And then remember, we should rewrite it the same order that it came in here. Yeah? So we've got 6. And then 6 minus 3 is just 3. So it becomes plus 3a plus a squared all over 2 minus a and then 4 plus 2a plus a squared and that's it you can't do anything more it cannot be factorized right so grade 10s what you need to do now is you need to practice you need to go and do lots and lots of examples make sure you know your factorization and then do the assessment at the end of the section thank you grade 10s have a wonderful day Thank mm -hmm. you.